Hello there, this is Dr. Brian Buchanan from the University of Alberta from Department of Critical Care. Thank you for tuning in again. Leading on from physics, move on to artifacts. I've tried as best as I can to minimize extraneous detail. Who cares about artifacts in ultrasound? Well, in pursuit of an accurate depiction of anatomy, the ultrasound machine makes a number of assumptions about sound propagation in tissue. Tissue heterogeneity gives rise to visible image artifacts. Most artifacts interfere with image interpretation, but may yield a diagnostic clue. There are a number of reasons why a topic is essential to image acquisition interpretation. It may lead to false conclusions, such as objects that are not present, missing structures, and misplaced structures. And if you have some quick rules in your sleeve, it can be really helpful to help interrogate and prevent yourself from falling into one of these potential pits. Here are some potential clues that you may be seeing artifact. The artifact may radiate from the top of the screen or the probe head. The artifact may move with probe movements. It may be linear and regular in contrast to the normal anatomy. There may be a nearby strong reflector, such as the diaphragm or pericardium. This can result in a duplicate image. They do not seem to make anatomical sense, and they can often be eliminated by changing the imaging plane or approach. The artifacts we will cover, this is not an extensive list, but the ones that are most common, acoustic shadow, acoustic enhancement, mirror image, reverberation, and refraction artifact. The most commonly encountered artifact is shadowing. It occurs with a particularly strong reflector or attenuator, leading to diminished ultrasound beam. Here we see a lost imaging data distal to the reflector attenuator. This is often recognized at below the rib or bony cortex, where we see a lack of imaging data. What you're seeing beneath here is in fact an artifact. This is often seen at the pl pleural line as well with a healthy tissue interface. As the big difference in acoustic impedance leads to the pleural line being a strong reflector or a bright hyperchoic line. Acoustic shadowing is largely unhelpful below ribs, but it does help you identify the bat sign uh, describing the rib pleural rib interface. On screen right, we can see a gallstone in the gallbladder and acoustic shadowing beneath. Those sneaky buggers are pretty high attenuators. Solar central line catheters, which can be recognized readily with sonification. Posterior acoustic enhancement. As we covered previously, sound waves propagate through fluid with minimal attenuation and or reflection. Hence, they are anechoic. Here we see increased transmission through fluid and increased artifactual brightness deep to the anechoic structure. Waves that pass via the fluid containing structures are less attenuated than waves passing through adjacent tissue. Here we see increased energy returning the transducer and increased echogenicity with reference to surrounding tissue. Posterior acoustic enhancement is a telltale sign that can distinguish cysts and fluid collections from solid masses in, in the body. Image left shows this artifact can also hide things, as we see in this longitudinal pelvic view. The image on the right shows the internal jugular vein with increased brightness posterior to it. Mirror image artifact is another common artifact we can see with highly reflective surfaces such as the diaphragm, which is in the path of the primary beam. This leads to multiple reflections. The primary beam reflects from such a surface like the diaphragm, but instead of being reflected back to the transducer, it encounters another structure such as a nodular lesion in its path and is reflected back to the highly reflective surface, such as the diaphragm, but then is reflected back to the transducer, and so the beam takes multiple paths to get back to the transducer. The machine makes a false assumption that their turning echo has been reflected once, and hence the delayed echoes are judged as if being, re being returned from a deeper structure, thus giving a mirror artifact on the other side of the reflective surface. That concept explains image left and a mass, or at least a perceived mass above the diaphragm. It's not really there. It's a duplicate from the underside of the diaphragm. If you change the imaging plane, or position of the probe, this will likely disappear. Real images are visible in multiple planes. Image right shows a parasternal long axis view. The pericardium in this case is a strong reflector. Often with the right position, you will see a cardiac structure in duplicate in the far field. This will likely disappear with the change in position. Wherever you find a strong reflector, you may in fact find a duplicate structure somewhere nearby. Reverberation artifact is when an ultrasound beam encounters two strong reflectors. The most intense reflection occurs when air is encountered as a dramatic difference in acoustic impedance. Diagnostic ultrasound imaging is unable to penetrate air-filled alveoli. In this case, off the pleural line, the ultrasound beam travels to the pleural line but gets reflected back to the probe. 
Unfortunately, rather than the probe reading it, it actually bounces the wave back off the probe surface and gets bounced back to the pleural line. Finally, it goes back to the probe and the probe finally receives the signal. When the machine finally receives a signal, it thinks the wave has traveled twice, as, twice the time. Therefore, we see a duplicate line, what's called an A-line. Again, this occurs at a healthy tissue-air interface. In fact, this can happen more than two times. It can happen three, four, five, six times, and results in multiple of what's called A-lines. A-lines are a reverberation artifact at the pleural line. This can even happen in the setting of pneumothorax, where again, we have the pleural line, and beneath the pleural line is in fact just air. And so A-lines themselves do not exclude pneumothorax. However, generally speaking, you will not see the, the scintillating hyperchoic signal of the pleural line in the presence of a pneumothorax. These A-lines are recurrent hyperchoic horizontal arcs parallel to the pleural line and arising below it. And these appear at identical interval distances between the skin and the pleural line. In the presence of sliding pleura, an A-line indicates healthy alveolar insufflation. Changing the path of insinuation or the beam may eliminate this artifact. Therefore, you must be perpendicular to the pleura. Even a small difference in position will eliminate these artifacts. A second example, also from the lungs, is the appearance of B-lines. Some literature refers to this as comet tails, but this is confusing terminology. B-lines are vertical, hyperchoic lines that extend from the pleural line to the lower edge of the image and move with respiratory variation or lung sliding. They also dominate over A-lines. This artifact is attributed to sound waves trapped in fluid-filled intralobular or interlobular septa, touching the visceral pleural surface. This can often be seen in pulmonary edema, reflecting a fairly plump fluid-filled interstitium. This is really just another type of reverberation artifact. Other scenarios that can generate reverberation artifacts, which can also be called ring-down artifacts, are generated by strong deflectors, such as gas collections in the body, like free intraperitoneal air, and metallic foreign bodies like needles, staples, and shrapnel. Finally, our last one, refraction artifact. This is the final artifact we'll explore, and this refers to essentially edge shadowing, which we can see with the white arrows. When the sound wave obliquely encounters the edge of the curved surface, the result is beam divergence and a loss of energy. This leads to formation of a shadow, most commonly along the edge of a vessel or cyst in a transverse orientation. Well, that's really it, folks. We covered acoustic shadowing, acoustic enhancement, mirror image, reverberation, and refraction artifacts. Again, this is not a comprehensive list, but really highlights the most common artifacts you will encounter in critical care ultrasound. Thank you for listening.